Hey everybody, Sexy Math the Pharaoh Wizard here. Hold on to your hold slots, because today I'm reviewing a romantic movie. <laughs> So I was given the opportunity to check out an independent, unreleased, an independent movie called Live Love and kind of give my early thoughts about it because I am famous and everyone loves my opinion, of course. So, um, I know I'm kind of the uh, big budget, uh, explosions, comic book movies, all that big stuff. Uh, most of my reviews are based around those. But I am actually a fan of independent movies. Um, I think, you know, when a movie is made, it's just a, a miracle that it's even made. And it's a lot of hard work. And I like that these people put this work into it just to entertain you and get their art out there. Um, you know, I just, I do check them out when I can. I have a whole list on Netflix that I get in a lot. Um, I see a lot more independent horror movies, but I've uh, seen a lot of other documentaries, things like that. Um, Super, uh, the movie Super with Rain Wilson was a bit more of an independent movie. Um, a lot of things like that. Uh, independent comedies are great. So I like to, you know, I do spread out my wings and check out some other things. Uh, this will be my first review of an independent movie, though. And I'm going to be a little bit more analytical, so you'll just have to... Uh, Bear with me on this. Now, this is a romantic movie, and I don't like romantic movies. Romantic comedies, romantic dramas, whatever it is, I don't care for them. Because they're too cut and paste, too paint by numbers, they're just boring, they hit, you know what's going to happen. And it's, they're just too predictable. Um, there is two that I do enjoy, um... And that's uh, One's Chasing Amy, which I think is the best romantic comedy of all time. And being that I'm now a bitter old man, I love the ending, how everyone gets screwed in the end. Spoiler. <laughs> but in love, everyone does get screwed in the end, right? That doesn't sound too bitter. Um, the other that I did like a lot, and uh, I've been sort of changing my tune on it, I don't know, uh, is 500 Days of Summer. Um, I liked it a lot when it first came out, uh, but once I flipped that bitter old man switch in my brain, um, I realized the character of Summer is just the worst person of all time and gets absolutely no consequences for being just a terrible, terrible person. She's like, her and the Emperor are the worst people ever. And at least he died. She still got to hang around. Anyways... So, live love. So, the plot of this movie is two people meet by happenstance and start dating. And it turns out the girl is a cam girl. And it's all the different complications that go along with that. It's sort of the general plot of this movie. Now, um, to its credit, the cam girl thing isn't played up as much as you think it would be. Um, so, this movie isn't really about... Uh, modern day obsession with pornography and internet and pornography things like that that movie's called on the doll check that one out if you're interested in that uh in that subject this one is more about dating in the modern age and the complications that go along with uh, internet dating how you meet people um and you know being able to look up somebody online once you meet them kind of thing and it does raise a lot of really cool and interesting questions when it does that. And I'm not going to give away too many specifics. Uh, you just got to see the movie and check it out. But I did think it raised some cool things to really think about with that uh, sort of idea. 
Now, the main thing this movie has going for it that's really awesome is the way that it is shot is just beautiful. Uh, the director knows how to set up a shot, and there's a really awesome... The colors in it are just amazing looking. Uh, there's just some really well sat, really good saturation of the colors in this movie, and it makes it really cool and fun to watch. Um, it's just done in such a beautiful way that it makes it really, really awesome. Uh, and the other thing that he does, along with the cinematography, is obviously in a movie like this, there's going to be long lines of dialogue with not a lot going on, mostly just two people talking. In a lot of independent movies, it ends up just being a still shot of those two people talking, and it gets a little dull and boring. This guy knew how to use the, the camera as a third actor and made it move in ways that made the conversation interesting. Um, not like it was like constantly spinning or anything. But it was just done in such a way that it, the conversations were not boring at all. And it made you feel more involved with the movie. And I, I really like that about this movie. And that was done really, really well. Um, now, it uh, basically revolved around two people. And they're both really good actors. Um, the girl be was better than the guy. Um, the guy had some moments where he fell a little flat. Uh, but the girl actor in this movie was fantastic. She was really into the role, really knew what she was doing, and uh, felt very organic. Now, this story, um, if you're picking you know, your notes out of the romantic comedy playbook, this one is the straight, narrow guy meets the quirky girl playbook. Or play, I should say. And um, to the movie's credit, she's not ridiculous quirky she's not doesn't have crazy hair she doesn't you know have a you know doesn't live like in a houseboat or i don't know something weird or crazy she's just has a little bit of different ways of looking at the world and thinking about uh, the world and I, that was a really uh bonus to the movie as well is that i once you know i got into it i'm i'm already starting to try and tear it apart i'm sorry but this movie had an uphill battle with me and so I'm just like, oh, this is going to happen. And it actually um, subverted my expectations. And they did a really well, really good job with the female character being the quirky girl, but not being the Hollywood quirky girl. She's more of your everyday style quirky girl, which is great. Now, there are some downsides to this movie. Uh, the, fir the main one being that uh, the... Like I said, uh, to its credit, the webcam thing didn't come up a lot. But all of a sudden, in the third act, it did come up, and it became your paint-by-numbers romantic movie at that point, where you got to have the third act break up, and, you know, they got to think about their lives, and yada da 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 And I felt it just didn't feel organic to the story. Uh, that it would just come up. Uh, the pro main problem with that was this seemed to happen over just like a long weekend of like four to five days of these people meeting and getting to know each other. And so when that third act breakup hits, it felt a little rushed, a little weak. Um, it just it didn't fit the movie. And, uh, and maybe because I was having such a good time of them not following the normal playbook that when it did start it again if it, it was a little disappointing that they had to hit this third act break up and we gotta you know get back together the other problem is is it didn't really have an ending as much as it just stopped now i don't mind movies that have you know an interpretive ending like uh cloverfield or inception uh but those movies still had an ending to the story but you could leave your imagination open up to what could have happened or what happened next kind of thing. This movie just kind of stopped. And I, there's a bunch of movies that do this, and I don't like that one at all. you give, you got to give me an ending. And um, I'll give it credit that they didn't go for the cheesy Hollywood happy ending, but you can't just replace that by just stopping. Like, I don't know if they ran out, of mo ran out of money or what happened there, but that that felt a little weak. But that being said, like I said, this had an uphill battle with me because I don't like romantic movies. 
But I really liked this one a lot. Um, it definitely brought up some interesting points of modern dating. Uh, the actors were really into their roles and did a very good job. And like I said, it's shot beautifully. And it's a really cool movie to watch. Um, by the way, I did link the trailer below. So check out the trailer for it. I don't know what kind of release it's going to get. Uh, I haven't been given that information. Um, I haven't seen where you could find it yet. And I think they're trying to decide how they're going to release it. Uh, I don't think I would have seen this in theaters if it would have came out. This is like a Netflix or on-demand kind of movie. Um, not like one where you're like planning your night around it, but just like you're hanging out like, hey, you want to check out a movie? And you just want something good and engaging, but you don't need it to be a, you know, an event. You just want to sit back and watch a movie. And this is perfect for that. Like It's a definite uh, Netflix and chill kind of movie. And uh, it was really solid um i just it had some minor problems that stopped me from totally enjoying it but for an independent movie it's very well done uh very well written it's a really good movie so check out live love uh i'm sorry i wasn't really too funny in this one i didn't really script out anything for this review uh, i just saw the movie and wanted to give out my thoughts and you know talk about movies because that's what i do so uh until i'm sexy matt the pharaoh wizard and until next time hold on to your hold slots